Welcome to Pepper and Fuchs Plugged In, where automation professionals can stay in touch with the latest enhancements in sensing, data communication, and control. Hello, everybody. This is Pepper and Fuchs Plugged In, and I'm Helga Hornis. And today I have with me Corey Akunzi. Hello, Corey. Hello, Helga. How are you today, Corey? I am doing well. How about yourself? Not too bad. So just uh, for for those that have not had the pleasure of uh, listening to one of the recordings we had previously with Corey, Corey is our product manager for our encoder product lines, amongst other things. And Corey, I take it you brought an exciting extension to that product line with you today. Uh, yes, actually, I did. Uh, we've expanded our IOLink encoder offering. Uh, we have a whole new line that has uh, some new features. Okay, great, great. Now, I do recall we've had IO Link encoders for a while, and it's probably worthwhile going back and setting the stage by talking a bit about what those products have done for us, for the market over those last two or so years. So if you don't mind, give us a retrospect, and then we jump into the new stuff. Well, that original line that we had is what we call the pure line and the pure line is able to measure a multi-turn or a single turn position and you're actually able to adjust the resolution on that multi-turn or single turn the pure line encoders also measure temperature and they can give you status in terms of direction of rotation or there's other types of statuses you can choose from and then they also had a critical detection warning for position and temperature, meaning if, let's say, you have a motor that's getting a little bit too far and it's not supposed to turn as far as it's going, it'll give, it give you a warning so that you can shut down the machine and, and go check it out. I think one of, the, one of the really neat features about these IO-Link encoders is that they more or less take the place of what used to be in the past customized and custom solution. If you need 100 pulses per revolution, or I shouldn't say pulses, 100 positions per revolution, you had to get a certain encoders built. Now here, it's it's totally configurable. Yep, it, it absolutely is. So like you said, it can take place of, uh, of a custom application because a customer can purchase this encoder and they can set it up to whatever their position measurement or uh, whatever their needs are for that particular application instead of having to do a whole project where we have a brand new custom product just for them. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you a little later, we, we try to usually, we, we don't talk much about numbers because we know that the audience is sometimes listening while driving. So we want to reduce the amount of numbers we are talking about. But I think in this case, we'll, we'll have to get back to that because it's critical. So now that you told us essentially where things were not too long ago, going back two years, what has changed? What is the new encoder line giving us? So our, our new encoder line is called the performance line. And that's going to add, you can have temperature or now you can have shaft velocity as a measurement. And then it also adds two new uh, warnings of shaft velocity and also maintenance. So let's say you have a, a, a motor or a machine and it's starting to spin too fast. You know, not only will it tell you how fast it's spinning, but at the same time, it's going to give you a warning saying, hey, you're getting out of your desired range. Yeah, that's really good. That opens up a new set of applications. I also found uh, the maintenance feature kind of interesting. That reminds me a little bit of my my furnace at home that gives me a warning, you know, change the filter. I mean, it's a, it's a maintenance function. That's very similar here. Is that not correct? That's correct. Yeah, it keeps track of how many hours and the machine's. Uh, has been running and also, you know, it, it sort of combines all those other features between the the velocity and any other statuses that you've chosen. And once you get up to a certain point where it's time to start doing maintenance, it'll it'll tell you. So it's, yeah, it's kind of like a, a check engine light or or like you say, it's time to change the filter or time to time to change the oil maybe in your machine. Yeah, that's 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 very important. That's great. So usually we want to tell our audience what are the applications. You know, it's, it's great to have functionalities and features, but where is this product going to be great? 
So encoders are used pretty universally to measure rotational speed, rotational position, and there's a whole host of applications where you can use encoders. And these will fit into pretty much all of those applications. Uh, some of the main ones uh, for material handling, for example, you can measure the speed and the position of a conveyor belt for automotive applications or even you know, mobile, app, mobile equipment applications. You can uh, attach a cable pull to these encoders and you can measure linear position, meaning if you need the height of a forklift or if you need the height of a scissor lift or you know any kind of a like a monorail system that maybe is going around your automotive plant and then of course like i say any any other type of rotational position uh, or measurement like for rotational speed and position of a, of a wind turbine blade anything along those lines also uh, another interesting application is for agv position control you can measure how fast that position or how fast that AGV is moving around the factory, as well as uh, what its position is, because it's measuring the distance that has been traveled. Yeah, that's that's very important, uh, and uh, not to get too far off subject, but that kind of makes the combination of an encoder and one of our so-called P systems quite interesting, where applications or plants have have coat tapes or coat, uh, coat segments stuck to the floor and they, they navigate from one of those coat segments to the next one. We have some recordings on that. And so you combine the two, the speed at which you're going and, and having some absolute positioning on, the, on, a, on a plant floor. Those, those are good combinations. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. So as I said, we, we need to briefly talk again about this, this whole business of resolution how many what is the how many how many individual positions around the rotation we can have so on the single turn let's start at the top end what is the highest possible resolution we can get so on the the single turn uh the highest resolution you can get is up to 16 bit which is uh, up to it's over 65,000 positions that you can measure in one rotation Mm -hmm. And how much can we scale that down? I don't need that much. That's too much resolution for me. Can I go to 100, 500, 1,000? Yep, you can scale that all the way down to 1 degree or 10 degree or 100 degrees. Whatever the application uh, calls for, that's, that's what you can scale it down to. Oh, that's, an am that's amazing flexibility. So on the multi-turn... How does that translate into the multi-turn versions? So the multi-turn will add an additional 15 bits of measurement, meaning so for every single turn that you're measuring, you can measure uh, 15 bits worth of turns. And that is about, what's that, 32,000? Yeah, exactly. So you can do up to 32,000 oh, turns. Okay, very good. So that gives you a grand total of 31 bits total for your for your resolution got it okay okay um really why would why besides that flexibility why should our customers utilize io link now the flexibility is one part but there's there's more to it right you you already alluded to the data give us a, a total picture of the applications and the, the reasons for having this functionality well, it seems that more and more people are upgrading their factories and their uh, production plants to include IO-Link because IO-Link fits well into this industry 4.0 concept. And it just, it adds a lot of extra, you know, IT type features to your plant. A lot more uh, flexibility in uh, customization, measurement, and just being able to keep an eye on everything that's going. Plus, when you pair multiple devices with an IOLink master, you're going to have far fewer cables that you have to run across your plant. Yeah. Yeah. One other question I have for you, and correct me, please, if I'm wrong, I believe we also have another encoder variant with IOLink that addresses the the heavy duty market or the the the, the mechanically higher demand applications. Yes, we do have the, we, we have incorporated IO-Link into our heavy duty 
housing that we have. It's a heavy duty stainless steel housing that has a much higher shaft load and that can be used uh, in much harsher conditions because it has a, an IP rating all the way up to IP 69K. So anytime you have like a, a wash down environment, you know, any kind of like maybe a car wash or maybe a, a food service application where you have to keep it clean and washed down, uh, that stainless steel housing and that, that high uh, degree of protection uh, are going to be make it perfect for that application. And those heavy duty line is going to incorporate the pure line features, IOLink features. Okay, understood. Good. So, Corey, as, as always, think about uh, the five word statement that we want to close this out with. And uh, while you think about it, I'll try to summarize what we said, and and you you chime in, and correct me where I where I am wrong. So, what we're discussing today is an IO-Link encoder with an extended functionality set on the IO-Link side. So there are additional parameters we can measure and there are additional warnings we have. So for instance, we get shaft velocity directly from the encoder and we also include shaft velocity warnings and uh, maintenance warnings, which is kind of useful as a reminder flag uh, do something with your machine, check something out, evaluate the motor, evaluate the gearbox. Um, also, what we did is we came out with an IO-Link version based on our pure line characteristics with higher mechanical ability for higher shaft load, higher IP rating. And as with all IO-Link products, one of the main reasons for having them is to provide easy access to all this data, much, much more data than historically encoders could provide. And, you know, this goes back again to the, the data that is on the, on the encoder in the IO-Link model. IO-Link encoders in general bring to the table the ability for a user to define the resolution to fit their application. They can go from very, very, very fine resolution, 16 bit per resolution, down to just about anything they want. You know, if they want 100 degree resolution, they get that, very coarse. 10 degree, they get that. One degree, they can also do that. I think that kind of is what I heard today. What do I forget? That pretty well sums it up. Okay, so then it's your turn. The five word statement for our new IO-Link encoder product line. So the five word statement would be that IO-Link encoders ensure future compatibility. That is very nice. I, I, I particularly like the ensure future capability because with this level of configuration flexibility, if something were to change, if something needs to have, for instance, higher resolution, then don't throw out the encoder, just change the resolution in software and, and keep using the hardware. I think that's a great feature. That's exactly right. Very good, Corey. Thank you very much uh, for sharing this news with us today. And thank you, everybody out there for listening. This was Peppo and Felix Plugged In, and we will be back soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Pepper and Fuchs Plugged In. Please subscribe to our channel and never miss hearing about the latest innovations in factory automation.